Hey everyone, happy Thursday, April 11th. It's about uh, 10 a.m. on the West Coast and it's time for another market updates. Uh, last week we talked about the Fed. Uh, the Federal Reserve has a dual mandate from Congress and that's to keep uh, unemployment low and keep inflation low. And this last week we got a metrics for both of those. So it was an important week. Uh, going back to last Friday, we got the always important uh, March BLS uh, jobs report. This has been a thorn in our side for over a year now. It keeps coming higher than expected um, and really keeping rates elevated You know, at this point. Um, and once again, it beat expectations. Uh, it was about 200,000 jobs were expected to be created. 303,000 jobs were created, so a big difference. And then the unemployment rate was expected to stay at 3.9 and it dropped to 3.8. Uh, so taking a closer look, like I said, came in really hot at 303, even hotter, non-seasonally adjusted, 659,000. Uh, they did a two-month revision of another 22,000, you know, all in February, or I'm sorry, all in January, a little bit of negative revision in February, but that's no help adding more jobs the last two months. Uh, but, you know, and that's on the business, business establishment survey, which is a lot of, uh, you know, formulas and stuff like that, where the household survey, they actually call and talk to folks. And, you know, again, this is where the unemployment rate comes from. And that did drop to 3.8. But as you, uh, you take a look here, you know, 16 and 19 year olds and 55 and older added 488,000 jobs, where 25 to 54 dropped a 48,000 jobs. So, you know, 25 to 54 is the main demographic of, of workers out there. That's actually going down, whereas, you know, teens teenagers basically and and um, 55 and older is where all those job creations were coming from in the household survey and then also like we've talked about lately um you know full-time dropped now last three months is down 256,000 jobs full-time jobs part-time once again went up 691,000 so 838 part-time uh 838,000 part-time jobs created uh the last three months and then multiple job holders were up 217,000 so again you know numbers look really really strong on paper 303,000 jobs created um you know unemployment dropping but when you take a closer look you have you know reasons to believe maybe that's not as strong as it appears so that wasn't a good one though that we you know as, as usual the bls jobs report didn't go in our favor uh, and then yesterday we got the March CPI. So not the Fed's favorite form of inflation, which is PCE and later this month, but another inflation uh, metric. And that came in hotter than expected and the markets hated it. Uh, it came in at 0 point, uh, up 0.4% month over month. It was expected to be uh, 0.3%. Core up 0.4, again, was expected to be, uh, be 0.3%. Uh, taking a closer look, um, you know, headline jumped from 3.2 to 3.5 year over year. The core was expected to drop a little bit. It stayed unchanged at 3.8. And again, the main culprit here is shelter. Shelter makes up 45.4% of the core in the CPI. And that stayed unchanged at 5.7, uh, 0.4% month over month. Um, but again, keep in mind apartment list, uh, core logic, all these different, you know, real time metrics for rentals has showing that at a much lower level. Um, so we're still waiting for that lag in the shelter data to, to catch up. Um, but it's still, you know, like, so it, it's still keeping that number quite a bit higher. And then the other one on here that keeps jumping out is this motor vehicle insurance. It was up again, 2.6% month over month, 22% year over year. That's part of the core for some reason, because the reason this is going up is more accidents, more car thefts, more break-ins, uh, things like that. And that really has nothing to do with, um, you know, rate hikes, uh, but it's part of the core and that one has not been helping us at all. Uh, you know, in the headline stuff, gas is going up, food's going up. That's, you know, no good. I'm sure we're all kind of seeing the gas going up. So again, you know, that did not play well in the markets. Um, again, the Fed's dual mandate here, they, they, you know, the Fed's supposed to keep unemployment low and they're supposed to keep inflation low. You know, so we want inflation to be low and we want the, the, the labor market to start to show some weakness. So then they cut rates to stimulate the economy. The opposite happened. Inflation jumped up a little bit more. So now they can make the argument, hey, we need to keep uh, raising, um, you know, we need to keep rates where they're at. So inflation dies. And then they could also say, hey, the job market's strong. Unemployment went down. We don't have to cut rates to, um, to uh, stimulate the economy. So again, a double negative for us with those two reports. Uh, today we got March PPI. This is the producer price inflation. So the people making the goods that we buy, that came in a little better than expected. So a small win for us. It was a uh, 0.2% for the headline um, and core when they were expected to be about 0.3%. Uh, so that was, like I said, a small win for us after a couple bad days there. Uh, and then going uh, initial job claims, that came in at 211,000 new job claims, uh, 215,000 were expected, continuing claims, continuing to be really high levels over 1.8 million. So again, people, you know, um, having a harder time finding a job uh, once they do get laid off, but this number is pretty, pretty mundane, pretty small number. So, you know, until that number starts to jump, until we see unemployment jump, we're not going to see, um, you know, much movement from the Fed probably.
Uh, miscellaneous stuff. We got the NF NFIB small business optimum uh, 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 NFIB small business optimism index for March, and that came in I think the lowest level since December of 2012. Um, so that and then the other part, you know, their plans to hire fell to the lowest level since October 2016. So you know that kind of flies in the face of all this other job. Um, you know, jobs the job market strong, businesses are doing great. Where small businesses are saying actually it's worse than it's been in quite a while, and we're not going to hire anybody. So that again kind of you know, flies in the face of some of the other stuff we're seeing. And then the Fed minutes from their last meeting were released. Really no new indication on what they're going to do with rates. They did talk a lot about uh, balance runoff, um, you know, which has to do with how many treasuries they own. They own about, they've been running off about 60 billion every month, maybe cutting that in half, which means reinvesting 30 billion into the, into buying treasuries, which would be good for, for rates. Uh, but that one's kind of flying under the radar. That's a little bit more technical, uh, but really nothing new in the, in the Fed minutes. Uh, and then average 30 year conventional this last week, like I said, the market did not like uh, the CPI that it almost jumped uh, over a quarter of a point just that day when this uh, inflation came out uh, 7.37 from 7.06 previously. So point over 0.3 in one week, which is not great going the wrong direction. Um, I think about this time last year, we were about 6.5 and everybody hated that too. So rates have been very stubborn uh, with inflation being stubborn and, and the job market being so strong and that has not played in our favor. Um, and then important dates coming up. We got uh, one more PCE inflation data. That's April 26th, so a couple of weeks from now. Um, and then the Fed uh, meets on May 1st. That'll be their next rate hike now, uh, hide an announcement. Right now it's coming in. It's like 2 3% chance that they would cut. So that's probably not going to happen unless something drastic happens. Um, and then going into June, it's only at 21%, where that was 70% a couple of weeks ago. 47% um, in July, so still under 50% of any cut in July, we don't get above, uh, you know, gets a 69% chance of some sort of cut by September. So that's a big pushback from what people were thinking May in, in, in June, but that was all because of, um, you know, how, how these different reports have come out. And then a couple days after that, we get another BLS jobs report and then the CPI that we got yesterday will come out again on May 15th. So again, not great news with, with those, with those, um, you know, with those job numbers, with those inflation numbers, really, um, like I said, inflation, that's the one thing that's been playing in our favor coming down. But, you know, like we talked about, it's gonna be really hard for the Fed to get to that 2% core rate with, you know, with, with, with what's going on, with how the numbers are looking, with gas going back up, with a shelter staying elevated, um, and so forth. So, you know, everybody needs to hang in there. Uh, keep in mind, though, like we keep talking about, and I tell every client, every realtor I talk to, if, if rates come down, that will increase demand. Increasing demand increases prices. So people saying, hey, I'm going to wait for rates to change. You're probably going to make up the difference in how much you're paying for the house. Plus, you're not going to get any sort of help from the sellers. If, if, if it's a seller's market, if, if it's booming, if people are coming out of the woodworks to buy, there's a ton of buyers out there, the sellers aren't going to work with you and give you seller credits to reduce the price, whatever it may be, um, you know, if they have 15 other buyers lined up. So now is as good a time to buy as any. So if anybody needs anything at all, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'd be more than happy to help. Have a great week, everybody.